Introducing the Tuner by Module 8. This is the world's first variable cinema lens that brings a Hollywood film aesthetic to your digital camera. And it lets you manually adjust the strength of the look, bringing character and feeling to your images. This means for the first time, my footage can look like I shot on an iconic vintage lenses like the Super Boltars or the K35s. Lenses used on some of the most well-known films in cinema history. However, they cost upwards of $50,000 per lens to buy. What makes the tuner truly magical is its patent-pending technology, Veritune. It allows you to adjust the strength of your look from subtle to intense, right from the lens itself. No more wasting time trying to emulate a vintage look in post or searching all over eBay to find the right lens. Now you can capture an authentic film aesthetic directly in camera. Founded by the top cinema lens designer in the world, the Tuner by Module 8 is the most incredible optical product I've used in a long time. Let me show you how it works. The story of the Tuner starts with this guy, Ian Neal. You see, he spent the last 40 years designing lenses used all over thousands of major motion pictures. The kinds of films you'd recognize with a look you can't forget. Ian is so infamous, he's won 13 Academy Awards for his inventions. Yeah, he's that good. For the past 35 years, I've spent my career designing innovative cine lenses that have been used to shoot thousands of movies. I've worked closely with cinematographers, directors, actors to create aesthetics never achieved before. But in all those years, no one has solved the problem of making the look of those incredible cinematic lenses available to everyone until now. The tuner works by being attachable to, detachable from prime and zoom objective lenses. It can be spherical, anamorphic lenses, different focal lengths, uh, different lens mounts. And in the whole system, is attached to different makes of digital cameras and possibly even film cameras. This makes the tuner an extremely economical lens for creating an enormous range of looks because it works with so many existing objective lenses. Beyond the looks, what took me over five years to figure out was how to make these looks to begin with and make them variable. How to enable a consistent look across a range of strengths from subtle to intense, all while maintaining focus on a compact product filmmakers could afford. We're the first lens company to obsess about really bringing film and digital together. You can think of the tuner similar to a zoom lens, but instead of zooming the focal length or magnification of the picture, we're actually zooming the aberration. By varying the strength of the aberration, we're able to vary the nature of the look itself. This breakthrough is the main reason the tuner is already patent pending and why I consider this to be one of the most radical lenses I've ever designed. At launch, the tuner will be available in three distinct looks. The L1 is inspired by the infamous Super Boltar. The L2 is inspired by our favorite Canon K35. The L3 is inspired by all the anamorphics that Ian Neal has designed. Let me show you each look in more details. So L1 is our first look. We'd say it's our most impactful look, mm -hmm. and it's really what we think comparable to the classic Super Baltar lens. Yeah. I mean, this yeah, is a lens yeah. I love so much. I've spent a lot of time in the lab with this lens, uh -huh. projecting it, and it gives that, it just gives that glow. Like, it just gives the, it gives true. the, it gives the look that I think everyone really is chasing with, right. these, with these kind of lenses. Right. The Super Baltar look is soft and warm. With a lower contrast to take off the hard edge of digital footage, the L1 gives all the halations seen in classic Baltar lenses while rolling off the sharpness as you go further outfield. We wanted it to go from where this thing starts to like way further. It's we call it the wicked baltar internally because <laughs> you know, you put that thing on you put that thing on the camera, yeah. you you already see an effect at its at its minimum level and you could just really crank it all the way up. The L2, one of the things is it's just a lot more subtle. Mm. 
it doesn't start quite as strong as like the L1. It starts mm -hmm. actually really almost neutral. Right. And then it pushes what I would say pushes past the amount of aberration you would get in a real K35 because mm -hmm. the K35s are actually really, really sharp. Yeah. So we're like, hey, we gotta go, like, go beyond them. Mm -hmm. But we didn't wanna go beyond them as much as we did on the Baltar look because I think the thought process for this one is people are really shooting movies and episodic television with K35s. Yeah. So they don't want a special effects lens. Yeah. We almost had to stay true to how subtle the real K35s are. Otherwise, we, we didn't want to make like a caricature yeah. of the K35. Yeah. We wanted to sort of stay close. Yeah, again, I think anyone who's been really interested in <laughs> trying or owning a set of K35s, mm -hmm. that just sort of wants that little bit of vintage. Mm -hmm. That maybe, I, I'd almost say that this is almost for someone who really can appreciate more subtlety. Yeah. Who wasn't looking to put this thing on and go, oh my God, look at yeah. my, look what it did to yeah. my footage. Yeah. It's someone who's maybe shooting something maybe episodic or maybe like a real movie. Yeah. I think the consistency of the tuner just makes it a really nice solution if you just want to sort of toe into that K35 yeah. world yeah. And, and just sort of get shooting. What's cool about L3, it's a field effect. Okay. Right. So, and it's actually the first look Ian did. It's the first one he showed me that got me sort of really yeah, just sort exactly. of jazzed up about like, oh my God, we have to, really, yeah, let's yeah, do yeah, all yeah. this stuff. This actually keeps the center really clear. And then as you go out sort of S35 to mm. full frame, it's bringing in a lot of aberration. Specifically, it's bringing in a ton of astigmatism. Okay. So you start with a mild astigmatism and you crank it to, you know, kind of a, a, a pretty good amount. L3 will simulate vertical and horizontal depth of field effects seen on Vince's anamorphics but without the flares or bokeh. When you look at it and you go, wow, astigmatism is a real depth of field effect, mm -hmm. which is similar to you know, anamorphic. So mm -hmm. you've got these you know, two different focal points. Mm -hmm. So you're causing weirdness, or not, you know, weirdness character yeah. in the edge of the field. Yeah. Ian's designed so many anamorphic lenses, so mm -hmm. many great anamorphic mm -hmm. lenses. And basically said, this astigmatism is the kind of astigmatism you get as a residual. You could either just use it as an effect. You can either use it to sort of make interesting things happen mm -hmm. at the edge of your field, mm -hmm. or you can actually do a spherical, you know, flat lens shot and do a two, three, nine to one crop. If you crop spherical footage to CinemaScope or two, three, nine to one, the L3 will help with some anamorphic characteristics that you will not get with regular spherical glass. Y'all, we are tripping right now. I don't even have a mic on this camera, but I just got to tell y'all because it is it is looking better than we could have ever imagined. We are Honestly, super hyped. 100%. Okay, Kickstarter, this is where you come in. There is no other product like this in the world, giving filmmakers access to classic cinematic looks at an affordable price. The tuner is just the beginning of what Module 8 wants to create, and we need your help to bring this new product to filmmakers all over. If you're excited as we are, back this campaign, share it with your friends, and let's get the tuner into your hands so you can create the next blockbuster film.